I now have a really nicely sharp blade. I can move on to fitting that blade to my block as I work through tuning this plane. I happen to know that this blade is really, really tight in this block. And in fact, I suspect that it was not actually made for this block. So I'm going to have a lot of work to do in order to open it up. In fitting a blade to a block of a Japanese plane, it's really important to know that these blades are self wedging. They are thinner at the front than they are at the back and also narrower at the front than they are at the back. What keeps this blade in place is the pressure between the back of the blade where it beds onto the block and these two channels here at the front of the plane. And I can see already looking down this that I have really tight contact here at the back rather than the front of these channels, uh, which means that I'm gonna need to do some work at the back and the back area of this plane and I can also see that I am right up tight against the sides of the channels here. This blade is wider than these channels are. So I need to remove material from the sides of these channels and I need to remove material from the base underneath this blade. What I will never touch is this front area here. I will never remove material from the front of these channels. That is my baseline and that I will keep consistent. So how tight do we want this blade to be? Uh, a good rule of thumb that I've heard is that with five firm taps, and they're firm taps, we can get that blade to seat. We want those taps to be firm because if they're too loose and this block moves, we don't have much tolerance and we suddenly have a very loose blade that pokes too far out the mouth and then we need to remedy that in a different way. So I've got to drop this blade at least 10 millimeters. This is a long way to go. I have seen blades that needed to be dropped this far, but it is a long way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take it out of the block now that I've got it in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this blade with pencil. I've also seen people use camellia oil for this process. I don't think that either is a bad option. Whatever you have more of, and that you would prefer to use. But what by, by applying pencil all along the back of the blade and to the sides, which is quite important because I know that these sides are fouling as well, I can then do my five firm hits and take it back out again. And you can hear as you drive home the blade and pull it back out, the pitch changes. And that's something that you start to become used to and you can listen for. Uh -huh. So now we read what this information is telling us. Here on the back, on the base of the plane block, we have not much contact at all. We do have very heavy contact here on the sides of the blade channels. This is much, this is not what I would expect to see. I would normally expect to see Contact on the back. Uh, if you are tuning a Kukuri plane, for example, I would expect to see a very heavy contact patch right down the middle because the Kukuris are particularly bowed in the block that way. Uh, if you're tuning a, a handmade Yamamoto or Kamiwaza or Tachibana, I'd expect these dark areas to be covering larger patches of the block and be slightly more consistent. So I've never really seen this where we don't have much contact on the back, but we just work with it. We are going to manipulate the block to fit the blade. And to do that, we need to remove these dark patches here in the channels. So to do that, we need one of two options. We either need a sharp three millimeter chisel, or we need one of these nice little floats from Iwasaki. They're about three millimeters wide as well, and they do a great job of removing material. So, we lay our block down where we can get to it and we come through with a file. And we file off the high points. And because we have a long way to go, I'm gonna just give it a little bit more because I'm pretty confident that it's going to continue fouling on the sides. And then I need to do the other channel on the other side.
Also worth remembering that it's only fouling at the back of the channel, it's not fouling down the bottom of the channel, so I'm going to mainly remove material from the back. There we go. So, now that we've got those dark areas removed, we are going to also, we've got this light dark area here on the base, very small, it's about a centimetre square. I'm going to remove that dark area. And we've got a little one on the other side I'm going to remove. There we go. And so this is going to be a process of rinse and repeat as we sneak this feet up, fit up to be able to fit this blade nicely. And have the edge protrude. So this time round, in these channels, I've got a very thin, long point of contact rather than a short, fat point of contact. So at one point, I've moved enough material that it's no longer contacting, but down the bottom, one side of the channel, I haven't moved enough material. So I need to repeat that process. So as we remove these dark spots, we are losing pencil from the process. So I'm just going to make sure that I've got plenty of pencil on the side of my plane blade, and on the back of my plane blade. repeat. There we go. So that's now moved a good three millimeters down, whatever I've done there. So I've got past a small choke point. But as I drop this blade, I want to make sure that this blade is dropping square. If I drop this blade with one side protruding further than the other, it's going to be very hard to adjust it to get a nice even cut. So as I'm dropping it, I want to make sure that my blade is protruding evenly. At the moment, one side of my blade is moving faster than the other side of my blade. I'm closer to protruding here and further away here. What that might mean is that on the side that's further away, I might have uh, a high patch that's restricting the blade and stopping that side of the blade dropping. But I think in this case, more likely, I've got funny things here happening in the channels that's stopping it from skewing and uh, evening out as it drops. So let's find out. So after about a half a dozen, half a dozen in and out and in and out with the blade, uh, making sure you've got pencil on it and then paring back the dark spots and, and repeating, I've got it to the point where we're getting quite heavy dark spots here in the block behind the blade, at the back of the blade, and we aren't getting much contact at all on the sides. That's where I want it to be, uh, because what we want is we want about a half millimetre gap between the side of the block and the side of the blade on either side, and that gives us a little bit of adjustability uh, in terms of the angle of the blade. Um, it's interesting in this one, I'm sure that this block was, did not come with this blade. I'm sure that they've been married up at some point here in the workshop probably. Uh, we've only got contact patches on the side of the blade. We don't have any contact patches in the middle. I think that'll be okay. Uh, it'll be a bit of a mission to adjust it nicely, uh, but now I've got this sitting about five millimeters behind, uh, behind the mouth and I'm going to pare away these areas bit by bit. They'll get larger and larger slowly uh, and will creep up on a nice fit. So I'm now sneaking up on this fit even more. And what I'm noticing as I drop it is that this blade is slightly sticky on one side. And when I first put it into the plane block, I can pivot it around one particular area. And it seems to be pivoting back here on the right hand side towards the back of the block. And when I pull that out, and I'd clean this up before doing that, I can see my two contact points are the same down the front on the left and up the back on the right. So I'm going to just remove this spot on the right for a little bit, focus on that until I can drop this in and have it feel like it's biting on both sides of the blade rather than one point. So I've just spent more time than I would have expected, in about half an hour, uh, sitting this blade, uh, but I'm very happy with the result. Uh, what I've got is I've got a blade that probably needs eight to ten good blows to bed it, but once it's bedding, it's just tickling my thumbs and it is bedding nice and square. It's coming down evenly um, and that's where it's happy to be. So I'm very happy with the work I've done. It's tighter than I'd normally, normally do, but because I uh, need to 
now tune the sole and I've got only a little bit of time left in the day, um, I'm going to leave it there and if I do want to tune it a bit more and make it a bit of a lighter set later, I can. It'll cut, it's square, and I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to move on to tuning the sole.